All right, what do we have? What do we have here? That's, that's the question. Whoopsh. Go ahead and open this bad boy up. Probably should have bought this last year, but I wasn't ready. And big discount during Black Friday. Adorama had a deal where he got uh, this plus the kit lens for like 500 off or 400 off, whatever it was. So I decided to pick it up. I'll talk about why. But this is just an unboxing. So here's the box right here. OM Systems. Uh, no longer Olympus, as we know. And I realized I only have one camera angle, so I'm gonna have to show you as I open things up right here, what it looks like. So got this right here, we got the paperwork and the lens. So this is the OM-1 Body Plus, the 12 to 40 F2.8 version two Pro. Um, let me first uh, start with, I'll bring this closer if you guys can see it right here. Start with the lens side of things, so. It's always interesting, right? Cause I've put some 24 to 70s or at least held them on the Sony and uh, Nikon bodies that I've had, how much smaller these are. Um, of course, it's covering much larger sensor surface area. So that makes sense. Olympus lenses always impress me. They're super premium. They're, they remind me almost of um, Leica lenses, but they're all metal build. They got the, the manual focus clutch. So yeah, this is the 12 to 40 F 2.8 Pro version two. Looks just like the first one. Got a lens, lens function button on the side there. Um, the lens cap now says OM Systems on it. So that's a little bit different. And then just under that, you have uh, the, lens, the lens hood, which I'll leave in there for right now. Okay, put that back to where it was, set this to the side. Uh, the paperwork side of things, you've got your, your warranty information, your instruction manual, that kind of stuff. So usual stuff there, I'll put that to the side little bit. Uh, oops, sorry. I'm trying to show this to you guys. So you fold open the lid here and uh, in this bag you've got the camera I would assume but there's also a little slot behind it and in here they give you a mic microfiber cloth so that's what that's what's in here microfiber cloth. Um, you've got some cable clips I'm guessing for if you're doing some sort of uh, <clears throat> cabling things up, tethering to your computer. You've got, oh, see, I like when companies do this. Fuji did this. This is the way to go, guys. Remember I told you about the little Fuji EFX8 or whatever it's called, how much I love using it? <clears throat> this is awesome. They give you a little flash with it. Olympus is one of the companies that still does this, or OM Systems. Really glad they did this. I love these little fill flashes. These are fantastic. So that comes with it. That makes me happy. Uh, what else is in this little box here? You've got your strap. It's a big, thick one. Uh, also interesting, this is like leather-ish or fake leather. It, it looks pretty nice. So that's good. Doesn't feel cheap. Of course, you've got the new uh, new battery for the OM systems. So this looks like here. So that's cool. I've heard battery life is pretty decent. I, heard, I think in ver, ver, firmware version one, there was an issue with uh, <clears throat> some battery issues, but I think they fixed that in the firmware. Another cable clip. I don't need to show you that. And then there is the battery charger. Um, I'm guessing then that means that's empty. So that, that's the end of that. So I'm guessing that means that there's a USB-C cable somewhere. Where did I miss it? It's gotta be, maybe in here. All right, let's go to the pouch behind the lens. Or the, the storage area behind, behind the lens. Yep, there we go. So there's your USB-C cable right there. So that goes into the charging brick. And then there is a lens pouch. Yeah, I gotta say guys, uh, I don't know. It feels like they give you a lot of stuff with this. The flash, cleaning cloth, lens pouch. Not, not bad. You know, some, some of these companies now are getting so cheap with stuff where they're like taking things out. It's, it's annoying. All right, then well, let's get to, let's get to the, Let's get to this part. Now, this is kind of interesting. It's in this um, black cloth thing and it feels like there's bubble wrap in there. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's in bubble wrap too. So that's awesome. 
put that over here. And here is the OM, OM1 right here. It's funny, you know, Micro Four Thirds, like the, the camera should be smaller, and it is. Like Sony makes, in my opinion, I think this is true. Besides, like Leica bodies, like M bodies, the smallest full frame bodies that there are. They're a little bit smaller than Nikon, a little smaller than Canons, um, and they and they make small bodies. This is still, it, it although it doesn't look, I'm holding up next to my Sony right now. Although it doesn't look much smaller, it feels smaller and lighter. The other thing is, this is very well, this is very well built, like. On the, like the Sony cameras and the, and the Canon cameras, um, this like right here, get my face out of the way. This plastic, or it's plastic on those cameras, it feels kind of cheap. It's got this rough texture, and I know it's metal or magnesium alloy underneath, but it feels kind of cheaper. This here, let me see. Actually, feels kind of metalish. I don't know if it actually is or not. It's cold, like it, it could be, uh, but it, it doesn't feel cheap. It's a different paint or something. Something small. I know it's it's. Let me unlock my computer here. It's uh, it's a little nuanced, but it feels good. And just like all Olympus bodies, you know, there's two cameras, maybe three, that fit in my hand like a glove. Olympus EM1 bodies always fit in my hand like a glove. Um, the Nikon DSLRs always fit really well in my hand. Uh, and this feels really, really good as well. So yeah, super nice. Okay, I don't need to go through it all, but like, you know, if you look in the front of the camera, you got two custom function buttons here, which is cool. Got your scroll wheel here. It used to be on the dial in the old Olympuses. I didn't like that. I don't like separating the shutter from this, but it works. Um, you've got your exposure compensation button up here and you've got your record button up there. I like that. That's kind of like my Sony. I, I just recorded a bunch of videos on my Sony. I like having that right on top, which is really cool. And then also looks like the record button. Um, if you see a little small symbol right there, also acts as a check mark when you go into the menus, you can check or uncheck things, which is good. This I like a lot better than the Sony. This is one thing I, when I made my initial Sony review video, I'm comparing it because I'm using it right now, is that where my hand lands, my thumb lands, you guys see this? Right behind it is the scroll wheel. This is perfect. On the Sony, it's got the exposure compensation or a custom wheel right here, and then a second wheel. But the second wheel, which is where you, expo like you do your aperture or shutter speed, it's recessed in. So you have to like wrap your thumb into, and it's, it's not super easy to get to. Um, that's one ergonomic thing that always kind of bothered me. The other thing that the Sony did, it does, and I'll have to show you guys at some point. See this button right here where it says ISO, okay? Now, I don't love this implementation where you have to hit ISO and then scroll around. On the Sony and some of the Canons, it's a third wheel right here on the D-pads, right? I, I kind of like that better because you have all three pretty quick. But the way Sony put their button right here on the edge, I almost always hit it. So that custom function button, I turned off. I used to have it for like crop mode, then I set it for something else. And I originally I was just like, you know what? No, this is, I keep hitting whatever button's there. White band, it just keeps changing. So it drove me nuts. Also this joystick lands perfectly. Again, ergonomically, ergonomically a lot better. The joystick is fantastic. I say the only thing that's a reach just from first glance is the AEL button right there. Um, I don't use that a ton. You could reprogram it, I'm sure. I haven't done that yet. But uh, you know, th that's kind of a, a reach for the thumb into that. But uh, it's not bad. Even the AF on button, yeah, this is ergonomically just already AF on buttons. So your thumb comes up here and you have like easy access to AF on, your dial, um, you know, the joystick is all right here. And that's, that's perfect. That's really, really good. Okay, I held one of these at <clears throat> BAH Photo when I was in New York buying my Leica. So I was in there looking at the 28 Summicrons. I picked one up and I was like, oh, it feels good. It feels like home. And um, yeah. Only complaint so far uh, is that, I don't know why Canon does this. I don't know why now Ohm Systems is doing this. Why do you have the on off switch on the left side hand of the camera? I hate that. I hate it. Now it takes me two hands to come up and turn it on, off. I like being able to one hand things and click, you know, and then go shoot. The Sony, it's, it's, on, the, it's on the shutter release. So that makes, that makes it a lot better. Um, Nikon I think was the same. If I'm not mistaken, uh, that's that's a lot nicer. Um, let's see. Other than that, yeah, you know, I like having over here on this left hand side on, where the where the off on is on top these two buttons to quickly get into stuff that I would access not on a regular basis, but I want access to quickly. So I know there's other camera systems that do it in different ways, but that's cool. It's right up there. 
Um, it's got your AF mode and your metering, and then you got your drive timer and your flash uh, settings all right there on top. So awesome. Um, on the side, ports. USB-C, thankfully, not like the OM5 where they put that old piece of junk port in there. Um, and then you've got, it looks like the smaller HDMI port. I don't use HDMI ports, but I know for video people, that's, they always prefer the bigger HDMI, like on the GH6. You've got a headphone jack right here, so that's cool. And then you've also got microphone. So, you know, you can monitor audio, which I don't ever do either. I just look at the little recording bars and you've got your uh, microphone input. Um, and then finally right here on this side, you've got your menu button and your, uh, I think that's the change, you know, the EVF, OVF, not OVF, EVF and LCD switching back and forth. One other thing <clears throat> I want to tell you that Olympus does right. Canon does this correct too. On your grip hand, the right hand, for the love of me, I don't understand for the love of God, why do they put these things right here, you see this, these things, right here. Like the Sony, it's, it's right here. And so when you grab it, you got this lump of crap where the, where the strap meets and stuff underneath your hand. On the Olympus, it's up here on the top. This is, let's grab my face. This is where it's supposed to be, right there. Canon does the same thing. In fact, Canon does one even better where they have like the embedded lug. So you don't have the, the jingle, the jingle jangles. It don't fold. You don't have the jingle jangles going on. Um, so I, this is part of the ergonomic difference. You grab this, I got full contact in my palm and I'm wrapping around it. And that strap connection right there is no longer here. Watch my face. It's no longer in my way. It's right outside my hand. Can manufacturers. That's the way you do it. Okay. Take note. But, uh, yeah, really, really, really good. This is, feels cool. I, I got to put the battery in power it up. Let's put the lens on for you guys real quick. Uh, there's that little baby sensor, little micro four loser sensor. Um, let's put this on. Nice little solid click. That's what it looks like with this lens on. Again, not not super small. It's it's smaller for sure than the Sony, but like not massively smaller. And then, because I would totally be into this, um, my computer keeps going to sleep. Let's put the battery in. Again, I like this. They have the little they have the little switch on the bottom where you flick it and open. I like that a lot better and it's spring loaded. That's the way you do it. Not the big flop. This one's a flopper. We don't like the floppers. Put that in. Of course, you've got contacts on the bottom too for a battery grip. They make a battery grip. I think it's called HLD, HLG. I forget, 10, something like that. Um, and then just because, let's open this flash. It's winter time here in Michigan and we don't have a lot of sunlight. So, and this is a micro four thirds sensor. So help yourself out, put some light in, plus it looks cool. Like I love the results I got with that Fuji EFX8 flash, it was really cool. So yeah, if you mount this bad boy on, just like this, it sits on top like that. And then of course um, you can, I think you push both buttons, yeah, you can, you can direct your flash like that, right? So you can forward, go up, um, you can rotate it around, point it back against the wall, Right, it gives you all the swivel stuff, which is really, really cool. And on the back, you can leave it mounted and it's not taking power, the on off switch, and then release. Again, there's, these are small things that Olympus does, or did correctly. Hopefully, they continue to do stuff right. The OM5 was disappointing, you know, I was pissed about it. I don't get pissed about cameras, it's just I was like, okay, that's not a good sign for the company. Anyways, um, this is a quick unboxing and look at the OM1. I'm going to power this up and uh, yeah, we'll talk about it in a little bit.